democracy hasn't always been a good word. We think of it almost banal as obviously something that is good and important, a vital value. And one of the good things about a liberal education is that you get to read people from other eras and other ages. And it always struck me that when I was reading and invited to read Plato's Republic and Aristotle's Politics, they didn't like democracy very much. And they had an understanding of democracy as something that's deeply unstable. The one thing they all agreed on, and the one thing they agreed on with the founders who studied them, was that democracies are fragile. And they do not last very long, and have not lasted in history very long. Liberal democracy, our particular version of democracy, has only existed for a tiny sliver of history, like maybe 200 years if you're really pushing it. Uh, and the entire rest of human history and culture has actually not been democratic. So why did Plato believe that democracies are unstable? Well, it's quite simple, really. Democracies are defined by a radical belief in equality. Equality of all kinds, equality in power, equality in ideas, equality in ways of life. Plato called it a multicolored cloak, full with many hues. He also said that if you had to pick of all the different kinds of regimes to live in, and those are a monarchy, an aristocracy or an oligarchy, or democracy, you would always pick democracy because it's lovely living in a democracy. No one really bosses you around. Different ideas are constantly around. Equality extends throughout the culture. This is the culture in which teachers defer to students, in which there is no difference whatsoever between men and women, and they're taken to be interchangeable. That's what equality really means. It's where the government is actually filled, and the office is filled, entirely by lottery, a really random sprinkling of the democratic society. And democracy is pleasant and has many appetites. Democracy is defined, really, by our letting our desires overtake our reason. So democracies tend to be full of wealth and greed and lust and food and all the things that we use to make ourselves feel better, even though we know back in our heads maybe it's not so great. And out of this extraordinary diversity of views, after a while, something begins to happen. Little inequalities begin to emerge and people fight against them. Ways of life in some quarters become incompatible with other ways of life. Views are not just simply varied, but contradictory. And in such a democracy also at the same time, the wealthy essentially accept that they can't rule anymore. So what they're going to do is make lots of money. They're going to put their own private wealth and private interests above any interests in the public good. And the public good is to be looked after only insofar as it helps maintain their ability to make money. And of course, in a democracy, those who are making money, those who have more status and money than others, come under withering criticism from below. This is a varied, diverse, equal, thriving, but cacophonous place with few restraints on its appetites, full of resentment of others doing better, pathologically devoted to the fundamental equality of absolutely every single person. And Plato says, when that begins to happen, when in fact these views 
and the diversity of people within this republic, all equal, not having power of each other. There tends to be gridlock, deadlock. These values are not compatible. How do we resolve these conflicts? And there also becomes resentment increasing of the wealthy, the people that somehow seem, through material God, goods, to be above this egalitarianism. And at that time, Plato says, usually something happens. Someone emerges, usually from the elites, who is full of the democratic temperament, full of desires, lacking self-control, pathological about food, constantly seeking sex, who realizes he has a moment. And the moment is for him to become a traitor to his own class, to actually accuse his fellow members of the elite of being corrupt, of being too, having too much authority and power and violating the core principles of democracy. And if he finds, and this is Plato's words, a particularly obedient mob in that broad democracy, he can appeal to the people and say to the people, this chaos that you're living is, this constant deadlock of ideas and values, we can't go on like this. Nothing gets done. Nothing gets decided. And then he makes the argument that the wealthy and the elites are actually preventing those things getting done as well. And they need to be brought down. And he, as a member of elites, knows how to bring these people down. He knows the system. All he seeks is your mass support to take them down. Sounds a little familiar. But it's something that Plato says always happens in a democratic society. It can't really, in the end, govern itself. And in the end, it decides and gives itself up to a tyrant. And this is the only way tyranny comes about. When Plato and Aristotle talk about the changing of regimes, how kings can become tyrants, how even though they, they tend to op oper operate in the opposite direction, how aristoc aristocracies can become oligarchies. He's also aware that tyranny itself, popular, really powerful tyranny, comes from democracies and democracies alone. The founders understood this very well, in fact, obsessed about it. How, they wondered, could they get a democracy? that actually worked, that wasn't short-lived, that didn't collapse under the weight of its own divisions. So they created what they believed to be a mixed regime with elements of democracy, elements of aristocracy, and even elements of monarchy in it. So that all these things can keep each other in balance and the thing has more stability. The core is the democratic will, but it's always tempered by elites, by structures, by institutions, by rules that slow the democratic will down, that give elites a chance to get into the process. And by any historical measures, they were incredibly successful. This is the long run, longest running democratic experiment, explicitly as such, since the Roman Republic collapsed, um, as we know it did after a while. And it's this sense that democracies will always end in tyranny that informs someone like Ben Franklin's famous quip when asked what they had managed to do at the Constitutional Convention and said, a republic, if you can keep it. I think that helps us understand more generally the very broad shifts that are occurring in our society.